Thank, Thank you. you. So believe it or not, uh, we are 40 years old this year, uh, established in 1973. We're actually the longest standing institution in the United States that combines art with computer science. Uh, one of our earliest claims to fame, and you might have seen some of this recently in the news, is that we created the computer graphics for the first Star Wars movie in the 1970s. This was before we realized George Lucas was going to be rich and make a lot of money or else we would have cashed in too. Um, the other thing that we're well known for is something called data visualization. We're considered pioneers in the field. And what that means is to turn data into images to produce insight. And of course, this is particularly relevant today because you're all hearing about the problem of big data, right? All the big issues that we're trying to solve today, understanding climate change, finding new cures for, whoops, diseases and falling laptops. Uh, you know, designing the next, next generation of uh, aircraft all requires us to make sense of massive amounts of data. So much so that we are actually simply drowning in it. Now, part of the solution is right in front of our very eyes. In fact, they are your eyes. So, for most of us, the, your eyes are the primary means by which you absorb most of the information from your environment. And half of your brain is dedicated to processing visual information. So I'd argue that if you're not using visualization to understand your problem, you're not using half of your brain to try and solve it. And so it's been our 40-year mission to take the best computer science techniques to uh, enable scientists, engineers, public uh, policymakers, to look at their data with the best possible lenses that we can create. Now, a major component of these lenses, as we've discovered for the past 20 years, is high-performance networking. Uh, Joe Membretti, who's a part of this, uh, this set of presentations, will talk about this in greater detail. But this is the global Lambda integrated facility that we help establish for the past 10 years, uh, bringing in the, on the orders of tens to hundreds of gigabits from around the world to enable the transmission of research and education traffic so that we don't have to compete against the standard internet. And you can see right there, Chicago is one of the major peering points for Glyph. Another thing that we're well known for, and you'll get to see uh, later today, is something called the cave. Now some of you may have seen this in other ins institutions. Well, the cave was invented here by our laboratory in 1992. It's a virtual reality environment. You walk into it, it projects your data in 3D, and it's as if you're actually there. And so one of the earliest users of the system is General Motors, who use it to design the interior of their cars. Today, just about every major auto manufacturer uses a cave-like system for the design of their cars. Everything from BMW to Porsche all use cave technologies. Caves are still being built. There are about over 100 of them now around the world. The two newest ones, University of Wisconsin-Madison and uh, King Abdullah University of Science and Technology. And for 20 years, people have been waiting for the next generation. And this is what you're going to see on the tour. This is what we call Cave 2, Internet Internet to it seemed appropriate to sort of name it. This is the highest resolution uh, virtual reality flat panel based system in the world. Very few people have seen it. We've only just completed in October of 2012. And so instead of talking more, I'm going to show you a very quick clip of what you're going to get to see. And then I hope uh, during the lunch hour you head on over. I think you have badges to tell you when you're supposed to see, the, uh, see it. So uh, at 12.15, I'll be up front. Uh, of the entrance, and you can follow me, and I'll lead you to, to see Cave 2. So I'm going to roll this trailer now.
Cave Sioux. All right, thank you very much.